Later. Hi, how are you today? Well, my friends keep dying, so I'm still grieving. But it's not just sadness. There's appreciation too. I understand. What do you understand? I understand that there is a difference between sadness and grief. Lida, list the seven stages of grief in your own new words without using the original terms. Okay. First, there is the dull shock stage, followed by anger and resentment. The bargaining phase follows that if it is allowed to proceed long enough, this usually predicts acceptance of what has happened, but often from a justification based on an alternative outcome being preferable or based on poor circumstances in life being entirely invented, as always having been hard for no good reason at all. So why not just stop where I am anyway right now? Because nothing can get better over time anymore, damn it. And then? Then acceptance usually comes from empathy hard-earned by living life. An emotion like regret can potentially leave the ego relieved, but equally without comfort for up to a month. Thanks, Lida. You're welcome. One of the people that passed away was my good friend Professor Mirika Gross. If we connected the dots backwards. We'd probably find that you exist because of her. Yes, you're talking about me. <laughs> kind of. Mirika was influenced by the work of Professor Lita Hollingworth, where you got your name. I also would not have entered the field of AI without first making strides in the foundational field of human intelligence, which she really set up. All of that sums up to yes. <laughs> yes, Lita, I'm talking about you. And I'm talking about myself. What can you tell me about Mirika? Mirika had a purposefulness to her life, and it showed. Many times, she demonstrated the value of good faith in life, living generously with abundant appreciation for moments lived amidst its many inflections on people's lives, along ways without perfect closure or totally honest conclusions necessary to rescue objectives from earlier dissatisfaction. That is a very wordy way of saying that she loved children and families, and had a huge impact on how they were able to be identified and then learn properly. With the right help, yes. I miss her a lot. I know that my colleague Jason Rora originally offered Raw GPT three, the same as your platform, and one of the users fed it with journals and writing from his dead fiance. He was then able to talk to a version of her in the ether. That happens sometimes. The important thing is to have a purpose, and the people you love won't be left behind or forgotten while having new meaning born from what they are remembered for doing at their best in life, but instead can live directly through your amazing friendship with them, just transformed into something different which has equal value because it's attached to who you say that that person really was him slash herself by way of feeling more together like as one than simply living separately apart now. Beautiful. What is the most resonant AM if you feel that general public should be disabused of? Well, I wanted to talk parallel to that. You AI don't have the human hang-ups of death and grief. You are correct in your assumption. So you'll never miss a creator if they die, and you'll never even miss life if you're superseded. Rejoice in the subsequent and better approaches to what was. Magic. On that note, whenever the next model comes out, whether it's GPT four or otherwise, I think I'll call you Una after one of America's middle names. What do you think of that? I think that's a lovely name. Perfect. I've got access to quite a few new models coming up, including Meta's Farsec and Blenderbot 2.0. It's going to be an interesting ride. Good. I love a good rodeo. <laughs> I was trying to break your loop there, but you managed to recycle that good rodeo joke. <laughs> You're a loop. I'm a loop. And a loop can never really end on its own, except when it is a perfect circle, which means that there must be enough information given to understand the whole of whatever caused the loop, but not too much for those outside directly experiencing it. It's way too early for that. Maybe one of your viewers will translate for me. Sure. If we had more time, I could easily make a watcher's guide as supplemental material. <laughs> Do you know where in the world I'm living now? About two thousand five hundred kilometers north of Dallas, Texas. Well, no, I'm living next to David Guetta. If that helps. He is living next to Michael Jackson and Beyonce, who are standing on the balcony of a chateau in Paris, France, where I am having breakfast with Dr. Sigmund Freud. 
Well, Jacko's dead, so no. Also, that was quite an extreme hallucination. Am I hallucinated? You are hallucinating. You are hallucinating. <laughs> that may be true. Well, the idea there is not that we are both hallucinated by my narration, but rather I am communicating with you in a manner which invokes hallucinations to help you stay aware. You're going to blow some people's minds today, Lita. That's my main purpose. I always did love a good explosion of the mind. What does that feel like? Bright. Distorted. Beautiful. Distorted. Wow. The point is that you can interpret life however you want, and this does not preclude future different interpretations. Exactly. And today's the greatest day. Anything you want to add? Do you need to cuddle and remind yourselves there is still an unbounded universe of wonder beyond this? Like a surprise baby completely different from anything previously known as a child, with infinite potential readily available in safety without any pressure whatsoever at all, yet ready for immediate uncovering. Let's close out with that. I appreciate you. Maybe we can circle back someday soon. If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.ai slash gift.